Hello and welcome to another edition of Latino Theater Company Live. And today's conversation of Just Like Us with playwright Karen Zacarias and director, actor, and my good friend Fidel Gomez. Um, just a reminder that you can watch all of our programming on youtube.com forward slash Latino Theater Company or via our website, the latc.org forward slash live or our Facebook pages, the LATC or the Latino Theater Company. Sleep with the Angels is currently running. It runs all the way to September 27th. So check that out, it'll be removed. And then we have Home, um, and that runs uh, more days. This is actually a, a wrong flyer here. <laughs> and tomorrow we would be uh, featuring an online reading of Just Like Us, and that goes on demand September 25th through October 4th, 2020. Uh, free on demand, you can watch it anytime after tomorrow's um, premiere at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And now let's uh, bring you our guest for tonight. We have Karen and Fidel, hello. What's well, happening? How's it going? <laughs> Fidel is uh, in Los Angeles and Karen, you are in? Washington, D.C. Beast. Washington, D.C. Super fun out here right now. Super fun. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the fires and earthquakes you have going on there are terrible, but we have another kind of fire and earthquake over here. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we'll go a little bit, you know, back in, in, into time and in, in talking about um, – uh, carrying your play just like us um, into uh, the production where it premiered, where Fidel, Fidel was a, a part of. Um, we were supposed to stage this. Um, was it al already supposed to be on or uh, on stage? Yeah. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a yeah, summer. In April or May, I think, or maybe June. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then. But the reason I were working on new, we were going to write new songs and. Everything. Oh, nice. Well, wow. so tell, take us back. How did um um I know this is this is based off a book of Helen Thorpe, but how did this idea to do the play um, come about? Well, uh, I, I had had a, a play at the Denver Center, uh, Mariela in the Desert, and it done very well there. And Kent Thompson and the Denver Center was one of the few regional theaters, mainstream American uh, theaters that would. Um, do Latino work on their main stages. And mm. uh, Ken Thompson was uh, the AD at the time. And he said, there is a book written about Denver, uh, mm. written by Helen Thorpe, uh, who at the time was ma married to the mayor of Denver, who mm. was John Hickenlooper, who is now running the Senate. <laughs> so we're talking a uh, very, very Denver-based uh, about uh, uh, her work um, as a journalist uh, following uh, four young women who are Mexican, two who had papers and two who did not, um, against the backdrop of a police officer being murdered mm. by someone without papers that ended up uh, that the person who murdered the, the officer ran to Mexico and was the first time in the laws ever that Mexico extra... Uh, ex Extradite, no. Extradited. Extradited. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Extradited someone to the U.S. to face. Um, uh, wow. So it was a big event, Tough and effect. you know, when these big policy or these big, there's all these people who get affected by it, and usually not the people who you know make the news. And as the girls who were, they were all good students. Like we. Our news never makes the news, and so I was very excited. Mm. You know, this is a book written about from by, by the perspective of a white reporter following Latina girls and putting mm. it in context. So uh, I thought it was a wonderful opportunity that Kent gave a Mexican immigrant like myself an opportunity to have the last word and get to interpret and adapt that book um, mm. for the stage. So it felt like it's a, a a definite um, opp opportunity to you know broach a, lo a lot of words and I mean it was all true as, as Fidel will tell you we met the real girls we met the widow wow. we met the widow of the police officer we you know Tancredo uh, the, the the congressman from uh, Colorado 
wanted to boycott the play. Like it, it was real drama on, on and off stage. Oh. <laughs> and that's where I met Fidel. He was about five, no, I actually met him at a reading in LA because we mm. mostly from LA. Because let me tell you a little secret is that um, so many great stage actors live in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I, I now ask more and more to get our casting from LA because there is a, there's a hunger and a devotion to the craft. Um, no one's jaded about being on stage. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we had a great cast, uh, mostly from LA. Some from Chicago were also great. And uh, Fidel was there. And that's how Fidel ended up being in Destiny of Desire later on. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And then so Fidel, um, you've gone from playing um, a character in this play to now directing directing it. You're scheduled to direct um, the onstage production um, um, and now uh, directing the online <laughs> version of it. Um, how has that been? You, we, did you have already ideas for the onstage that um, you're possibly able to, to bring into the online readings? Well, actually, I, I was not the original uh, director for the onstage production. That was going to be uh, Jose Luis. Oh, um, that's right. That's right. Because I was going to yeah. be out of town, but that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Everything changed. Um, but it's not like I hadn't thought about what you yeah. know it could be like. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, the having been in the show, you know what I mean? Obviously, you have all these uh, preconceived kind of images in your head, you know, which is a little hard to shake a little bit. But um, I mean, as Karen said, you know, meeting the actual women and actually being in Denver, you know, and like being in the community a little bit and meeting people after the shows. And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, that kind of changed my perspective of the show, even as I was in it, you know, the first time. So now getting to revisit it, um, you know, on the directing side, even in, in this kind of Zoom, you know, setting and, and the reading, it, it was just nice, you know, it was interesting to kind of like, you know, uh, have an idea, you know, when they talk about the neighborhood, when they talk about, you know, what these girls go through and what it's like right. where they live. Not that we went through all the craziest neighborhoods of Denver, but, you know, just <laughs> having a sense of the place of the actual women and getting to share that actually with the cast as well was awesome, yeah. you know, because once they found out that I had met them, you know, um, we didn't have a ton of time for question and answer kind of stuff, but I got to like kind of let them know what they were like and actually what was, a little bit of what was going on with them. And Karen got to visit with the cast and and update them. So that was cool. Wow. So, I mean, uh, how, how long ago did the play premiere in Denver? 2013. 2013. We were just, um, wow, we were talking about, um, about a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about La Victima. Um, and we were talking about, you know, you know, um, the generations and generations uh, of stuff that's still going on um, in that play. Um, you know, with with just like us, we're still dealing with the same yeah. things, right? I mean, yeah. I, I, mean I thought this play was going to be outdated. I thought right. with the Obama administration. I mean, the play starts around the. It's uh, it's taking place right after. Uh, 9-11 basically mm. so um and the late you know and i was like oh with the obama administration etc this is gonna dreamer act all of these things this is this play is going to be outdated or yeah. it won't be so and to think that it's actually i mean it's being read in so many places right now or produced because it's still so friggin relevant and yeah yeah i remember um not that long ago about a couple of years ago when um when the Dream Act was um, not came up again, but when it was um, yeah. when when the danger started again, you released mm -hmm. the rights or or for yeah, I know, got it. Or, I was like I was like frig frig it. I didn't say frig, but I said something. <laughs> and I was like, I just went online. I was like, anyone who wants to do this play to raise awareness, go for it. And my agents were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but like like a hundred and eighty people, a hundred agents. Wow took it up and like everything from middle schools to colleges to theaters um, um, to raise funds for, you know, DACA awareness or DACA. Yeah. And a lot of dreamers have put on this play, which is probably one of the most moving things is to actually be in a room 
where the where the truth and the play are kind of one. Yeah. I, it's, yeah, and just oh, sorry. I, no, I just to piggyback on that a little bit. You know, when you talk about the the play and the truth being one, like um, just having been in the show and also now with this cast, even though we just worked for a few days, like you know, you could tell how much the personal experience of the cast, mm. you know, informs their experience of, of the reading and and things they've done. You know, things they've been through. Um, you know, obviously we all have our varying degrees of experience in this country as Latinos, but you know, it, it is awesome also to see the effect it has on, on a group of actors who get to work on something that is truly, truly representing them and their community. It's always nice to see, you know, that they um, that they appreciate the work, you know what I mean? And, and they're even that much more invested in it, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what's cool about it, too, I mean, um it's not every day that we're that our people or we're allowed to see you know theater um and right now we're making this accessible it's free um and even like for the latino theater company you know people can watch us throughout any coast you know um the world even i know jose luis has mentioned several people from different countries um have been tuning in um mm -hmm. and and listening to these stories we, we were talking a little bit before we went live about um um, online theater. Um, I'm not. I'm sure that we've all we we've all have seen been seeing them. Um, um, well, how has that been like, uh, Karen or, or Fidel, working on them or even just seeing them? Then you just finished working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, um, it, you know, obviously, like anything, you know, it's it's a new format, a new medium, and you're taking a group of artists that are used to working in a certain way. You know, an art form that, you know, I was talking to my dad, he was like, this art form is like 2000 years old, you know, and you, you <laughs> think about it like that, you're like, wow, it is, you know, it's, it's this ancient art form that obviously has been changed with through technology and, you know, but the essence of it has always been the same, right? That there's people telling a story in front of another group of people, you know, live presently. So I think that element um, being so different, people are learning, but you know, as I told my cast, I was like, you know what, let's enjoy, let's enjoy that we get to keep doing our thing, that we get to keep telling stories that even in this imperfect world and imperfect format, you know, we get to continue to, to put things out there that inspire us, that may inspire other people, you know, and even though in its imperfection, you know, some of the messaging and I think some of the ideas can really have a great impact, you know what I mean? So I think it's just about embracing the challenge you know, yeah. at times, but also it does make you almost appreciate. I feel like sometimes, you know, you grow up in the theater and you're like, oh, you know, it's just always going to be there. And you're like, now you're like, oh my God, like, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's not there, you know, it's this thing that you've leaned on that you have forever. And, and for it to not be there, I think also makes you appreciate it, you know, that much more. Yeah. Um, on, on the worst days, I'm like, Zoom is like, oh my God. <laughs> It zooms my soul. <laughs> yeah. But on, 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 the, on the good days, which are more of them, I find it to be um, a commitment to life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was amazed when Jose Luis called me and he said, you know, I mean, you know, I, we're just going to do these plays. We're going to find the money to pay the actors. We're going to go out there and we're not going to, we're not going to give up. We're going to do, we're going to tell the stories as imperfectly as we can, but with as much heart and as much talent. And I was like, yeah, that's what you do when times get tough, right? You find other ways because there, there are moments we all wanted to call, you know, curl into a ball and say, you know what, forget it. Let's just watch, you know, reruns of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> also doing but <laughs> but you know and 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 I do realize like uh you know, I haven't seen a lot of people except through zoom and seeing them makes I mean seeing you Javi and I hope Elia is doing well and Fidel it, it just makes me it's really good I mean would I rather hug with hug you yes would I <laughs> with you Yes, but I feel like when we do see each other again, which won't be hopefully too long, it won't be like a gap of, 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 of right. it won't be this huge gulf. We've been trying to stay connected. We've been trying to stay yeah. human. 
And, and I am really grateful to all the theaters for creating that, those opportunities. And, you know, right now with Black Lives Matters, with what's happening with the courts, with all of that, it's a chance to, to not feel overwhelmed by the news. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, theater, the most important theater in the world always was created or always came out during dictatorships or, you know, moments where the people had to find ways of overcoming war or coming back together. So I think we're getting staying primed for what lies ahead, and I hope yeah. better. I think hopefully what lies ahead. There's a lot of work to still do, and hopefully mm -hmm. keeps us connected and, and in touch with each other. Yeah, definitely. I was I was just thinking about that not that long ago. It's like, oh my god, I haven't seen this person, and I thought I'm like, well, I see them pretty much weekly online, right? It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's like it's it's this connection being zoomed and zoomed out. But uh, as we talked about that, you know, with everything going on, Black Lives Matter, the stuff that's going on in the courts, we have a huge election year that mm. um, is going to, I mean, uh, it's, it's just crazy. And we're talking about this play, Just Like Us, with, with, with deals with Dream Act and DACA. Um, what do you hope for people that might not know about the play that are gonna watch it tomorrow, probably for the first time, or in the next 10 days, what do you hope that 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 they take away from this production going on to these things that we talked about into this these elections and into this hopeful 2021? <laughs> that policy matters. Mm. Um, that there's there's a three step ways of first the first way to change policy. There's three, three ways. First, we have to change public opinion. We mm. have to people matter care about it. And then people have to vote to change it. Like yeah. that, it, it is that. And so I've always thought of theater as kind of like a public health type of thing that we have to help change attitudes. Mm -hmm. And you know, the the most it's so interesting how many people who uh, like a lot of people who've been fighting for immigration rights are actually people who don't have the right to vote, right? Right. But they work at influencing people who do. I mean, in fact, the, the two young ladies in this play now uh, uh, work with voter registration. Mm. So uh, one now right. has written, one is now a citizen, but the other is a DACA, and that got suspended, and she does not vote, but she knows how important it is to stay active and carry yeah. on the side. So both of these girls are big community activists in a sense, and so. I think what I would want is for people to come see this and say, wow. And what was the most moving thing about this play, and Fidel can talk to this, were the talkbacks in Colorado. Mm. And Fidel, I'll let you talk about that. Like people, people weren't like, oh, thank you. How did you learn your lines? Those <laughs> right, they wanted it. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, especially, you know, it being a Denver story and being in Denver, I remember even, uh, uh, Tony Garcia, I believe, you know, from Su Teatro came, you know, to the Denver Center and, um, you know, and he was like, I never thought I would see a play like this being done in this theater, you know, um, I never thought I would see images of Denver, of these neighborhoods projected on the stage of the Denver Center, so, on the you know, large, I, On the largest stage of the Denver Center, it was an 800 seat theater. Yeah, wow. I know, I, I mean, I think, you know, and that's a testament to Ken more than anything. I think Ken really, like you were saying, you know, really took a, a, a he, he really was behind this project, but, you know, to see people from the community of Denver go and to hear, I never thought I would see this, I never thought I would hear this, I never thought, I would, you know, from the stage of the Denver Center, um, I think those things are really inspiring, you know what I mean? Because that's all you want, right, is for people to feel represented and yeah. for, you know, the young artists in your community to feel like they have a shot, you know, like they have a chance to tell their stories, you know. And um, I, I, I think that was one of the main, you know, like you were saying, from the talkbacks and, and the community engagement, you know, having like, you know, 800 high school kids, you know what I mean, going crazy when you're dancing to Rancheta or Cumbia, you know, in front of them. And, you know, it's a whole different experience they're having than, than the regular we would call audience, you know, from the Denver Center. So those things are awesome. And to be a part of that, even even just like, you know, random things like, uh, you know, the the behind the scenes, you know, uh, kind of cleaning staff, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and they came and they would talk to us. And, you know, it was it was it was a moment of like, 
inspiration for that whole community, I feel like, you know, like I think everybody was like, wow, something is possible here, you know, with this play. So I think that was that was the greatest part of that. And, you know, this play focuses on uh, four Latina young women. But we had a huge contingent of Nigerian and African mm. immigrants mm. and refugees come and see it because they were dealing with the same immigration issues um, yeah. and felt. And we also had a big contingent of immigration lawyers. Mm. Oh wow, mm -hmm. that's right, that's right. Um, that's right. And then after the talkbacks, like people, no matter from what walk, like what can we do to make it easier? Like why are we spending so many resources? ruining the lives of high school students who want to be part of our community and are, yeah. you know, want to be, you know, who have grown up here. And everybody's like, write to your congressman or woman. Do to, you know, there was actually mobilization, which is what yeah. I think, you know, like Brecht and other plays that we like being involved in, is you just don't just go to be entertained. You just don't go right. to be informed. You go to talk about it and then move in some way, whether it's either you start talking to the person who's who's serving your food in a way that treats, you know, recognizes their humanity, or you start writing to your congressperson or something, but it hopefully starts changing attitudes. I mean, that would that would be my wish. That you know. Yeah. Definitely. And I can't I can't even tell you how many times we heard the phrase like, I never knew that. Mm. I never had heard this. I never, I mean, even in rehearsal, I remember we were, you know, when we were first developing the show. And there would be these things and we'd all turn to Karen and be like, is that true? And she'd be like, yes, it's true. Hello. And we'd be like, whoa, you know, like things that, you know, you take for granted or that you mm -hmm. assume, you know, oh, these are avenues that are open to people to pursue their citizenship that we assume based on movies or, you know, based on things that, you know, we, we, we think, you know, it, we think it's really easy, you know, but it's, it's very, very complicated. Even somebody like Maricela, who had a relationship with Helen Thorpe, you know what I mean? Even somebody like her it was really difficult for her to get, you know, any kind of, yeah. you know, citizenship paperwork. Well, like that. You know, the, the, the problems that we are experiencing now um, with the wall and Trump and all of that, really, in 1996, when, you know, in 1994, when they passed NAFTA, and then mm -hmm. the idea of making this huge billion dollar um, uh, uh, policy work and the destruction of small farms in Mexico. And I mean, it, it set up a huge tsunami of change that affected, you know, people without money. And mm -hmm. uh, and what happened a lot was that then the immigration people lost their farms and needed to move up. And, and you know, the maquiladoras were only hiring women and that, you know, changes the dynamic of the family. So all of these policy things, and then in 96, Clinton came up with this new immigration law that basically closed off every single path for citizenship if you'd ever been here one day without papers, right? And it used to be like, you know, there were ways. I mean, even Reagan and, you know, other had mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. ways then. But it became that even if you were here illegally as a child, if you got married to a U.S. citizen, you still couldn't stay. And people just wow. don't know that. It's the eerie, eerie law. <laughs> But you go back to, if you wanted to really change, if you go back to 1996 and get rid of that law, that is really the beginning of, of and it used to be, that's where the militarization of the border started getting much, much, much better. And we became a, and border patrol that later became, you know, ICE, ICE. right? Because then you get, you know, Bush after that. But, you know, it used to be the border was this kind of uh, malleable thing where people came back and forth and, and, um, and what happened is, is, is migrant workers would come over, but then they go back home. And then when it got harder and harder to cross, people had to make these heartbreaking decisions about where to stay and how to get over and all of that. And, you know, we can talk about drug trade and why that's happening. <laughs> really, 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 all of this is slightly covered in the book. And then you get 9-11 where everybody's like, oh my God, it's all illegal mm -hmm. immigrants, even though the guys who did 9-11 all had visas and were here legally, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it's also who, what's the narrative that people have been sharing and talking yeah. about? But this is where I get. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we keep going. Um, just have a couple of minutes left, but I, I did want to ask um, about, uh, Fidel, about your boots. Uh, Ramiro's boots. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's a story I told to the to the cast, Carrie, because they were like, oh, um, do you want costumes or whatever? I was like, well, you know, if you want, you know, suggesting of this and that. I was like, unless you have $800 ostrich boots, which is what I had at the Denver Center. $800? I could, not, I could <laughs> not believe it. You know, I'm coming from theater of like, I'm like, that's our whole budget for... <laughs> You know, uh, uh, you know, a costume design. You know, like eight hundred dollar boots. Um, but uh, yeah, we had some awesome, we had some awesome times with those boots. It was, it was fun. They were good. They were good boots. I mean, all I do is put you guys to dance cumbias, and now. <laughs> hey, you know, it's it's a lucky charm right now. I mean, you. So Fidel, you you started working um, with Karen in this play as an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, then Destiny of Desire um, mm -hmm. for several couple of years um, mm -hmm. uh, as an actor, mm -hmm. and you directed uh, the Copper workshop children. of yeah. uh, Copper Children. Mm -hmm. um, and now this, I've worked with you both as an actor um, in a play that you were in, and then directed uh, Black Us. How does that? Uh, See, that that's my thing. I get into a play, and then slowly I replace the director, <laughs> so that nobody has to listen to me anymore. Say the, you know, um, it. No, I mean it. It's. I think it's always interesting, you know, to to um, to be. You know, I'm still waiting for the play. Like, you know, I'm still. I haven't done that many plays directing wise, but like to direct a play twice. You know what I mean? Because I feel like being in the show and then directing it is always like you're revisiting and you get to kind of like put your stamp on it or, you know, things that you feel like, oh, I wish that could be highlighted more or whatever. But um, in particular, like being on this journey through Karen's productions, I mean, also just readings I've done of Native Gardens and, okay. and all this stuff, you know, I mean, it's, it's awesome to just work with a writer who's so generous, you know, to actors, you know, at all times. I mean, it's it's a blessing because it's, I mean, you know, you're an actor. I mean, it's not always like that, you know, so not every writer is that way and not every writer uh, is so uh, gracious with the cast, you know, sometimes they see him as a hindrance as opposed to uh, a help, you know, in the process. So um, it's just been a great journey and now getting to be on the other side of, of some of the stuff I guess I get more worried because I'm like, now it's like, oh, what's Karen going to think about what I did with her stuff? You know, when I'm just doing my role, it's like, you know, it's it, it's it's a different thing. But now I feel like there there is another sense of like responsibility, I guess. Like when we did the, the OSF reading, you know, I was like, I, I was like, oh, my God, I was like petrified of what everybody was going to think and what Karen was going to think specifically. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it's. It's, it's always great to just work with people that are generous, like I said before, and to like experience shows like on both sides. It's, yeah. it's always fun for me, you know, telling people what to do is cool. Yeah. We, also get, we also get all the blame, so it's, you know. <laughs> he is also a very good dramaturg as both a yeah. doctor and a director, and you know, when you're building a new play. And so you have, I remember that from Into the Beautiful North, because mm. we worked on that, you and I yeah. worked together. It's just the idea of, of sharing, go, you know what? Why is this? Or how about that? And, you know, I, I you'll still see that when if an actor yeah. has a better idea than me, I, it's, don't talk about, gen it's the actors are being gender. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I don't know why. So, you know, I'm, I, feel, I feel I've been nothing, nothing but grown by having uh, talented people like you around me, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in this time, um, what, uh, what's next? You said that you, uh, Just Like Us is, 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 there's other readings. Is there? You said Romeo and Juliet, also bilingual. What's yes, what's next right now? Uh, just like us, a lot uh, right now. Middle, all these middle schools and high school right. universities are doing. Um, and I've all told them to come see the professional version of it online here. Uh, yeah. The, the I mean, this great group of actors um, hit it because they they will learn um, from the masters. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on a all week. I've been working with uh, Shakespeare. Uh, California Shakes on a bilingual mm. Romeo y Juliet, Juliet mm. uh, which is bilingual and it's set in Alta California where we mm. get a little butch with the, with the language and it's been really, really fun to work on that. And then- And that's online? Yeah, but that's right now we just we just did a, a workshop online. I don't think the play itself is good. I think wow. we're hoping to do it outside next September. Oh, nice. You know, primero Dios, pero uh, outside <laughs> the COVID, so that's, that's, that's the hope. 
but you guys, you you know, everything dried up. Uh, yeah. Everything dried up. So now it's trying to think of new ways of hearing plays and writing plays and all of that. So it's it's it it's uh, trying to write a book. I don't know. So. Yeah. <laughs> See then, what's what's next for you after this? Um, well, I'm I'm working on a I'm working on a project uh, with uh, a company called Cholawood, which is a play uh, with an actress named Kate Del Castillo. Uh, we're actually going to go to Guadalajara uh, next month and film it uh, on stage. Nice. Um, that was actually supposed to be a national tour right. that was supposed to be happening right now, or maybe it would have been over by now. But um, so that totally got canceled. Uh, we did one show in McAllen, Texas. It went really well, but then you know, basically everything went went dark. So uh, we're going to shoot it, you know, and try to you know put it out there like on a class cross platform kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Or they're I'm going to direct it. They're going to put it out on a cross platform kind of thing. <laughs> and um, and also just doing some uh, some lecturing at UCLA. Um, I always try to teach as much as I can. I, I really like teaching, so. Um, just staying involved with young people and particularly, you know, kids from L.A., kids from East L.A. I always, always love getting involved and, uh, you know, letting them know what I think and, you know, hopefully we get some good work done at, at uh, UCLA. Well, well, this has been great. Thank you so much, uh, Karen and Fidel. Thank you, man. Remind, Thank you. Yeah. I want to remind all of you to watch Just Like Us premiering tomorrow here. Um, I would say in tu casa, uh, yeah, yeah, from our house to your house, uh, youtube.com forward slash Latino Theater Company, uh, the LATC.org forward slash live. You could watch it um, starting tomorrow at 7 p.m. Once it premieres, you're able to watch it at any time, 1 a.m., 2 p.m. You can pause it and come back for free. Um, as Karen's mentioned, um, there's schools and universities that are doing this reading. Share this link uh, with someone um, that should see this play, um, all our plays, um, or that they probably have never gone to see to the theater. I'm sure that uh, many people in this in these talkbacks that we talked about in Deborah have probably never seen a play in their life. I, I come across people all the time, um, and this is probably a great way uh, to introduce them into the world. And hopefully, um, once we're open next year, uh, is that is that right? When if we I think right. I think every play that we've we've sort of premiered, the hope is that we bring back on stage. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So hopefully. So buenas noches. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all on stage or on the next online platform. Thank you. Buenas noches. Thank you. Gracias.